The feared attack, a bombing forewarned. Casualties rushed yet again into Cobble's emergency hospital. Frankly, for Pakistan, it's not ISIS or one group. Pakistan has been a victim of the conflict in Afghanistan for four decades now. Since the 80s, we've housed over three million refugees. Any time there is instability, whatever group is causing instability, um, we are the ones who bear the brunt uh, of what comes next door. We have lost 80,000, 80,000 casualties in Pakistan since 9-11, $150 billion lost in the economy, uh, 2 million internally displaced Pakistanis. We had never seen this kind of violence in Pakistan. Why did it happen? Because there was a failed policy next door in Afghanistan that we had nothing to do with, which spilled over. And that's why our worry even today, uh, and we've been um, saying this to the entire world, is we must do whatever it takes not to allow uh, prolonged instability or conflict in Afghanistan. We must engage the ground reality and find a way to stabilize the country. Um, ISIS, frankly, has been there even under Ghani. And they were causing mayhem even at that time. The West didn't want to talk about it. It didn't suit them. But the real question is, how did they survive uh, with thousands and thousands of uh, troops in Afghanistan? So they've been doing this before. This vulnerability has been there. Um, and it shows you that the Taliban now, when they're there, the enemies are still there. And so what we have to do as the international community is ensure that we do right by the average Afghan, ensure that they have enough provision, that there's no humanitarian crisis, and the security is under control. Pakistan's effort with the Western world in the war on terror directly brought, brought about a backlash from militant groups who then started targeting the Pakistani state. And today, Pakistan has lost 80,000 people in terms of casualties, $150 billion in economic, um, in terms of the economic loss, and over 2 million people internally displaced. Uh, Pakistanis do ask this question, why are we glossed over? Uh, were our lives not as important? Was our partnership not valued? Because what we have heard after all of this, unfortunately, has been do more. You haven't done enough. How many more lives is what Pakistanis ask? We said, let's formalize the border crossing so both of us can see who's coming and who's going. The answer was no. So I want to ask, whose sincerity should I doubt? The Pakistan that is saying, if you think there is a problem, let's man this border and jointly observe it. Or the country that kept blaming Pakistan but did not want to do a thing. The government of President Ashraf Ghani did not want to do a thing to stem whatever he thought was happening. And I'll tell you why. Because the real flow was of terrorists coming from Afghanistan into Pakistan. That's the conversation they did not want to entertain. And I'm sorry to say that the global narrative just went along with them, uh, blaming Pakistan, when really Pakistan has been the victim of the war in Afghanistan for the past four decades. Like Allow me to also say, our eastern neighbor, India, played a very negative role. Continue to tell the world uh, through fake media campaigns, the EU Disinfo Lab, not Pakistan, the EU Disinfo Lab, a reputed organization last year put out a report, 114 countries, over 750 fake websites. India had set up to do one thing, malign Pakistan globally. But forget about that. What I want to mention here is, this is why the entire focus remained on a non-issue and the real problems on the ground of corruption, of lack of trust, of the army not being able to stand up were completely ignored. They were all positive stories coming when Pakistan kept saying, please look at Afghanistan. This is not going to go in the right direction. Um, why did no Afghan stand up? This wasn't because of Pakistan. Pakistan did not tell the Afghan army not to fight. Pakistan did not tell President Ghani to leave. The Taliban took over the north and west of the country much before the south and east fell. How could Pakistan have anything to do with the north and west of Afghanistan bordering Iran and the Central Asian republics? So I really do think that the world should now stand up and say, we will learn lessons. There has been something that's gone horribly wrong. 
and we will learn lessons. We will not try and find a scapegoat, which unfortunately I still see attempts being made um, in, in some media uh, outlets in the West. Let me come to where we are. Number one, the best case scenario would have been if President Ashraf Ghani and the Taliban would have agreed to a political settlement. That's gone now. The worst case has also been avo uh, avoided, thankfully, which was if there was a protracted conflict on the ground and spillover of instability into the neighboring countries. But now is the challenge. We have a reality on the ground. Taliban are control in control of 95% of Afghanistan. Their initial statements, uh, I don't have to say this, but I'm only quoting General Nick Carter, who said that we are cooperating with the Taliban on the ground. There seems to be a very straightforward relationship. The Taliban are cooperating. Uh, we need to be patient, give them space. Taliban, we may well, uh, there may well be a Taliban that is more reasonable, um, uh, et cetera. So Jen Carter is, is saying, let's try and see what could be done. And Pakistan's message is exactly the message of the UK and others. There should be an inclusive government. There should be rights protected. There should be a moderate governance model. This is where we need to engage as the international community. 